I want to talk about positions that we feel the most comfortable with going into the spring or sorry, going into the summer and then ultimately into the fall. And I'll start and hopefully I don't take your thunder. And if, if you want to backpack on the same thing, then go for it. We don't have to, you don't have to pick a different position, but to me, it's hard not to go to the running back position right. here. Uh, you look at what they have, especially in the one, two punch that I think they possess that I think will be the best in the conference this year between Mario Anderson and Sutton Smith. Uh, I'll start with Mario Anderson, 850 plus yards at South Carolina last year, four total touchdowns, kind of in a rotational role. It's not like he was a, a workhorse, a back cow, or like every, that, yeah. every down back, but he was extremely effective when he was called on, uh, averaged nearly five yards per carry. Some people will go uh, whatever at that five yards per carry because college, the numbers are typically higher. We're talking about the SEC on a South Carolina team that had a terrible offensive line last year, they they were just turnstiles everywhere on the offensive line, especially at the tackle positions. So he was extremely effective in the toughest conference in college football with one of the worst lines in that conference. And just physically, what he brings with his size, with I, I don't want even want I don't know deceptive speed is right, but he can move for how big he is. He is like the perfect thunder back. And then with Sutton Smith, I think Sutton is the perfect lightning back. And we haven't seen, to me, enough from him over the last couple of years. And I'm not saying because of his ability. I just think, especially last year when I believe he was ready to contribute at a high level, I think Blake Watson offered a very similar skill set. Right, right, and I think right. that held him. I think that held him back a lot. You look at Mario Anderson, he's a between-the-tackles guy. He's a solid receiver, but Sutton's a better receiver. He's better in space. So with these two guys, I think, obviously, Mario, your first and second down back. Sutton as your third down back. You can also mix him in on passing downs uh, in the slot if you wanted to. He's that effective as a as a receiver and a route runner. I love what they bring. And then you got Brandon Thomas as well, um, who we know was a very effective goal line goal back line. last yep. year. Yep. Um, so last, The last two years, really. Well, yeah, Honestly, the, the yeah. last few years. I mean, he obviously yeah. had his breakout. I think it's been, what, three years ago now dealt yeah. with injuries and some other stuff, but what was still has still been effective in the role that he's been asked to play. So overall, it's hard not to be extremely confident in that group because I think they complement each other so well. I think they have different skill sets and styles that will allow them to, like I said at the top, I think they'll be the best running back duo trio, just stable in the conference. I want to ask you this. I know there's there's been some discussion even in the Discord about uh, Mario Anderson and Blake Watson. And I wanted to get your opinion on this. Blake was like, you saw a lot of Blake last year, um, seeing what he'd done even at the combine at, or yeah. at, not at the combine, but at the um, pro day uh, pro day. Um, I mean, he's rising up the draft boards. Like people are, are starting to take notice of him that he could be a guy who drafted, you know, um, day three. drafted this year, day three, that kind of a running back. Um, Memphis fans have been asking a lot of questions about, because we don't know a lot about Mario other than what we've seen from South Carolina tape. Who's going to be better for the Tigers? Will it be Blake or will it be Mario? And and I don't I don't want to like necessarily say future casting like who's going to have a better season, but in terms of like tiers of running backs, like there's a different tier here, right? Like we're talking about two kind of different tiers of running backs between Blake Watson and Mario Anderson, right? It's tough. I mean, I think as an athlete, Blake Watson excels Mario Anderson. I mean, it, you saw what he did at the pro day. He was, I think he was top five or top seven in 40 broad jump and uh, vertical. For Which isn't that wild though, because that's what we had heard. Blake Watson doesn't have the speed to play in the NFL, and yet he ran a really, really good time in the 40. Right. Anyway. Yeah, and I think, I, honestly, to me, it's, it's kind of insane that he didn't even get a combine invite yeah. because we've been hearing about him uh, since before the combine even took place. So I, I was kind of surprised by that. Right. But still, he built his stock up even more at the pro day. I think he was at the Shrine Bowl as well and turned a lot of heads there. Yeah. But it, I don't want to say the caliber is different because I think I think really believe that Blake can go to the NFL and have a, a successful career and a successful role. But from pedigree coming into, let's let's base it on that because that's all we really have, and Mario Anderson was a D2 guy a couple years ago, so you can't 
you can't cut the corners too much on it, but he was a guy that was able to get in the rotation year one at South Carolina and be very effective. And even though Blake Watson had an effective collegiate career before coming to Memphis, he was at Old Dominion. So I think maybe your caliber is a little bit different coming into Memphis, even though I think most of us that knew what Blake Watson was capable of weren't surprised by We're this We're not year. surprised by what he did, yeah. But Mario Anderson just has a build that this conference isn't used to seeing. That's you a good know, point. like like he just he's not made to run over AAC linebackers. He's built to run over SEC linebackers. And so I think they're both very good players. I think they both, you know, obviously what Blake did here, I think Mario has a chance to do very similar uh, numbers wise and just overall effectiveness wise. So I don't think there's like this huge gap because I think a lot of people may forget that Mario was a D2 guy uh, just two years ago before he came to South Carolina. So pedigree is a little bit different just because of where they're coming from transferring to Memphis. I mean, you if you pull back the layers two years ago and Mario Anderson was coming to Memphis from D2, then it, it wouldn't really be that it much wouldn't have, It wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah. Right. But he was able to, you know, do enough there to go to South Carolina and – and I know some people may scratch their head over the decision to come to Memphis, but to me, it's the best decision he could have made because right. he plays in a conference where he's probably going to dominate and he's on arguably the best team in the conference going into this year with the best situation, with plenty of opportunity for carries, with plenty of opportunity to show that he's capable to play at the next level at a school that has put, what, five, six running backs in the NFL right. over the last four or five years. And let's so, be frank about it, as crazy as it sounds, potentially even a more opportunity to play postseason ball than at South Carolina, right? Yeah, like I, I mean Memphis has don't I would say Memphis has a better chance to play postseason ball yeah, than yeah. South Carolina does. Yeah, I mean South Carolina is you know, moving on from Spencer Rattler, Xavier Leggett, like they're they're losing some of their best players and they weren't very good last year. Right. So yeah, absolutely. I think he has more opportunity to put more on film. At Memphis. Yep. Um, so, obviously, running back's a huge deal. Mario Anderson and and uh, Sutton Smith. I'm excited, man, especially with Sutton. Like, I want to see him shine, but I do think you're right. Like, I think he kind of got lost in the – in the. Blake was a better running back. Blake, this is Blake's fifth year in college football. Um, at this point, you just kind of trust the guy and what he did, and they just kind of did the same things, to be honest with you, in a lot of ways. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really interested to see what Sutton Smith does this year, being kind of the lightning to the thunder, if you will. But um, I think, obviously, the number one answer for me is quarterback. I'm the yeah, most comfortable fair. with the quarterback position. Um, <laughs> We've got a guy who's 21 years old, who's been, who's about to play his fourth year of, of um, college football for the same coach. Um, under the majority, mostly the same system. I yeah. know uh, he's, but even in that case, he's been under Cramsey now for this will be Cramsey's third his third year under Cramsey. So it's like this. I, I think there's a level of 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 confidence that I have. And what have we always said, man? In college football, the majority of the time, the team with the best quarterback is going to win the game. Yeah. And and I don't see many games this year, especially in conference, where Seth's not going to be the best quarterback on the field. So yeah. I'm I'm most comfortable with Seth Hennigan as the quarterback. I think that is very fair. And speaking I know of, that's the easy way out. I'm not a football guy, so I had to go with Seth. Yeah, no, it's fair. It's very <laughs> fair. 